Welcome back to the Archives, Acolyte. I see your tenacity for knowledge is strong, as is your curiosity for the dark side. For generations, the general concept of the dark side as viewed by the Jedi is that it was an evil practice full of dark ways and sinister motives. While the dark side can be viewed as just another perspective on the Force, there are a few things within its study that are undeniably strange and even frightening. While using one's hatred to manifest lightning or use the Force to inflict pain in various ways upon others is detested, there exists a practice that the Jedi Order hated beyond all other dark side knowledge. It was the very thing that got Ajunta Pal and all of his followers removed from the Jedi Order in the first place. This resulted in the Second Great Schism and the formation of the Sith, and this Force ability was known as alchemy. Those who are in deep with Legends lore will be keenly aware of this phenomenon and many atrocities that resulted from this Force ability. Many Sith Lords practiced alchemy in the Order's long history, and it would be Plagueis, and especially Sidious, that would find it to be their primary hobby outside of their works as Sith Lords. But what exactly was Force Alchemy? What did it do, and why was it considered the most, even beyond the Jedi, to be the most evil thing to come out of the dark side practice? Well, stick with us today as we deep dive into the research notes and manuscripts of the Sith to figure out the truth of alchemy, the most sinister dark side ability of them all. So let's start with the first question. What exactly is Sith alchemy, and how did it work and function? Ironically, despite it being a main point of contention in many stories, we know shockingly little about the actual process of it, or what it really means. We usually find the results of an alchemical process within living creatures that have been mutated by the dark side. Alchemy could also strengthen weapons and forge artifacts and were basically enchanted. From that, we gather how alchemy actually works, is that it is essentially the process of imbuing an object or creature with the force itself in order to transform it into something more powerful and sinister. Force users were utilizing alchemy long before the Dark Jedi and the Sith were ever even a thing. How long ago, you may ask? Nearly 25,000 years. That's right, my friends. The first recorded people to actually utilize force alchemy were the ancient Jedi Order. In fact, alchemy was one of the main schools of study within the Jedi Order, the ancient Jedi Order, before the Jedi Order that we know today existed, and it was how they actually crafted their force-imbued swords, the very weapons that they utilized. Taught at the Temple of Science, alchemy required students to lean closer into the dark side, or at the time, what they referred to as bogan. While some mostly forged tools with it, they also mutated beasts and created experiments that by today's standards would be considered barbaric and that normal Jedi would be disgusted by. Even some of the Jedi in the Order viewed alchemy altogether as perverse and heretical, despite the Jedi Council deeming it permissible. Though it seems that this would change in the coming years, as the Jedi fled from the world of Tython and rebranded themselves as the Jedi. Lots of things changed during the Jedi transition, especially regarding the use of the dark side after the ensuing war following the first great Jedi schism. And with this change, the practice of alchemy was either reduced or outlawed altogether, especially on living creatures. This would be what ultimately caused Ajunta Pal and Sorza Sin to be ostracized by the Jedi. Their fascination with this forbidden and banned force ability. We oftentimes think of the ancient Jedi Order as the correct use of the force, but this shows that even they had their great and terrible flaws. But wait, why exactly? exactly was alchemy evil? If it helped to produce larger, stronger creatures, tools, and weapons, could it not be used in moderation like other things of the Force? While the Force is hardly ever black and white, on this we can definitively say that no, there isn't an ethical way to use Force alchemy, and we'll explain why. The idea of imbuing objects with the Force in order to provide one more power was seen as selfish and unnecessary by the Jedi, and imbuing blades with the Force fell out of fashion with the rise of the lightsaber. While some Jedi Masters decided to imbue wooden staffs or other pieces with the Force, they did so by meditating on it and bringing out its inner life in order to strengthen it, rather than putting the object through an alchemical process. Alchemy practiced on living beings and subjects is completely inhumane in every sense. Let me explain further, this is basically using the force to rewrite and forcibly mutate a creature's genetic makeup. This is a direct affront to the living force, as it uses the dark side to completely disrupt the nature and order of things. Mace Windu put it like this, The Sith perversion of living things violates the very essence of the force. Life creates it, allows us to tap into its potential. We obey it, not the other way around. We are parts of the organism, 
not its breeders. Unfortunately, we have never been given a definitive idea of how this process actually works though. All we really see of it is occasionally Sith bringing out objects out of boiling cauldrons, or watching Sidious use force lightning on a basin of mysterious liquids. Even in the Darth Plagueis novel and in his research notes, detail is never shared about what they do exactly. I think the prospect of this process being so horrible that it continues to be shrouded in mystery is absolutely tantalizing. It's one of the most famous dark side abilities, but also one that we know exceptionally little about. So, if we as acolytes don't know how it works, what exactly did it cause? Well, we do have many accounts of various Sith creatures that have been mutated via Sith alchemy, the most prominent of which would be the Leviathans, War Worms, and the Tarentatex. In the very beginning, we saw the Jedi mutating creatures like Rancors, with one of the Jedi Rangers having a pet Rancor that she mutated to have wings, and she rode it into battle on more than one occasion. Leviathans, however, were a beast of a different color. They were the crowning jewel of achievement by the Sith sorceress, Sorzis Sin, one of the first ever true Sith. Typically, we often see mutated creatures being employed by the Sith against Jedi, especially in the old days. The Dark Jedi did this in a move of desperation towards the end of the Hundred Year Darkness. Leviathans were these absolutely massive, carnivorous reptiles created to roam the battlefields as living superweapons, and draw the life energies of enemy soldiers into blister traps that dotted their backs. Their hide was tough enough to resist lightsaber blades. When they killed a being, they absorbed all of the victim's life force and all of their knowledge. Even if a being was freed from the creature's blister traps, the victim was rapidly aged and weakened as a result. A terrible fate. Adult leviathans could also interfere with the sensibilities of force sensitives, causing the victim to hear screams, develop headaches, and trigger obsessive behavior centered around making the pain stop. Leviathans were mentally enslaved to their creator. They were a marvel of alchemical engineering, and absolutely horrors of the mind. It is safe to say that some things just aren't meant to exist. Even Yoda agreed with this sentiment, and was of the opinion that it was actually merciful to end the life of a creature imbued with Sith alchemy. The Sith also used alchemy to produce potent toxins, and forge powerful weaponry, several of which we have covered in past lore entries. However, one of note is the poison blade of Naga Sadao which the Sith Lord utilized in place of a lightsaber when fighting the Republic in the event known as the Great Hyperspace War. Sith alchemy was also the main way that the ancient Sith forged all of their powerful artifacts, such as the Mer Talisman. The powers of this practice didn't stop here either, as even plagues or viruses could be created using it. This includes the Rakul Plague, and even such powers as reanimation. It all stems back to alchemy. In fact, the Blackwing virus as told to us from the Death Troopers novel that created basically the zombie apocalypse aboard a Star Destroyer was a bioweapon that Sidious had issued. The Empire used the knowledge gained from a certain Sith alchemical process to create this bioweapon, which was meant to be employed against the Rebellion. Fortunately, or rather, unfortunately, depending on your outlook, and an outbreak of the Blackwing virus took over the Star Destroyer and corrupted all personnel on board. Many powerful Sith practiced alchemy, including the likes of Naga Sadao, Freed and Nad, Exar Kun, Belia Darzu, Tenebris, Darth Plagueis, and Darth Sidious, along with many, many more. Several of these Sith, Plagueis and Sidious in particular, would find that sometimes Sith alchemy has adverse effects or can backfire entirely, with even them fearing it. This was what ended up actually causing the conception of Anakin, coming from the Legends novel Darth Plagueis. The Sith Lord had attempted to create the ultimate being in the dark side, and it caused the Force itself to rebel against their will and bring about the creation of the Jedi Chosen One, something born of alchemy. Well, my friends and acolytes, what do you have to say about this strange and unnatural practice? If you had access to the Force, would you be willing to dip your toes into the taboo and try your hand at alchemy? If not, why? Also, do you agree that alchemy is as vile and perverse as the Jedi seem to think that it truly is? Or are you with the Sith and see it as a gateway to much power? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. And as always, my friends and acolytes, be wary of the world around you and may the Force be with you.